We're on the floor of PDAC 2024. I'm joined with Dan Blondell from Nano One Materials. How are you today? Great, Tracy. It's fantastic to be here. Normally I ask people what they're here for PDAC for, but with you, I want to start with your partnership with Sumitomo. Congratulations, and how is that going? It's, it, it, look, Sumitomo Metal Mining is a uh, really a fantastic um, class one partner. They, you know, the Japanese do take a while to get across the line, but once they're in the fold, they're dedicated, um, they're responsive, they're, they're involved, and they're just an absolutely uh, tremendous partner to have in the space with a deep knowledge in cathode manufacturing and, uh, and technology. Uh, of course, having been a provider of, a uh, manufacturer and provider of NCA for all of Tesla's uh, original batteries through Panasonic. Uh, obviously, they have a very deep field in the space, and they're a 450 year old company out of Japan. Uh, uh, what more could you ask for? Well, they're obviously investing in your team building talent, of course, your technology. I read we've got 40 patents and another 50 plus being queued. Yes, uh, patents keep coming out. We keep innovating. Uh, I think maybe when we interviewed long, long ago, uh, you know, patents are part innovating. Continuous innovation is very much part of a technology company's kind of you know bloodstream. What keeps us going? Uh, we keep adding more uh, IP to the portfolio, and obviously that increases shareholder value. It increases our our leverage and our position with our not only with our partners but with uh, with potential customers as well. We've done a lot of uh, interviews about government, government to business, but. We don't really have to have the discussion with you because government is already invested in Nano One. Can you give us an update on that? Well, uh, we've, had, um, we've had a tremendous amount of support from government, um, from SDTC, which is Sustainable Development Technology Canada. We're still drawing down on the last, uh, the, the, the last project we have with them, which we announced about a year ago, actually. And so we're, we're into that. We're kind of into the second phase of that. And there's a few more to go. So uh, it's, been, it's been really supportive. All in all, probably in the tune of $25 million. Uh, not all drawn down, but that's what, the, uh, that's what the government has poured into us so far. And we're also actively working with the Canadian government and the Quebec government. Uh, to facilitate the next stage of our growth. Uh, our pilot plant in Condiac um, is going very well. We've got it to the pilot stage where we've got ton scale materials going out to, to potential customers uh, looking for the government to help support that initiative. And then the next stage after that, which is our first commercial plant um, in, uh, in the Canadian um, uh, uh, diaspora. That's where we'd like to have it, right here in Canada, uh, supporting uh, not only the U.S. economy, the Canadian economy, but also uh, feeding out into, uh, into some potential European or Indo, uh, sort of, sort of yeah, in, in Indo-Asian Pacific uh, type of uh, potential customers. We've been asking CEOs in our interviews to give investors three competitive reasons why they should put Nano One materials at the top of their due diligence list. What would you say today, Dan? How would you prioritize your competitive company strengths? I would say we, we are sitting right in the sweet spot um, with the only LFP uh, production facility in North America in a market that is only just very much at its beginning. We have the most experienced team and we have the only production facility, uh, LFP production facility outside of Asia. So we're very well positioned to address a market that has reached 60 to 70% market share in China and is virtually nil in, uh, in North America and Europe. So I think that's probably the first reason. The second reason is that our technology, our one pot process enables lower cost, um, a, a less complexity, less GHG emissions, um, we completely eliminate all of the water waste and all the sulfate waste that the rest of the industry is saddled with. And by uh, eliminating sulfate and using nickel metal or iron metal as our input materials, we're able to decouple from the stranglehold that China has on, on nickel sulfate and iron sulfate, for instance. So uh, there's, a, there's a strategic element. There's a, uh, obviously a competitive element. We drive down cost and complexity, and there's a very strong environmental element to it. So those are, that's kind of the, the, really the value proposition that we bring to the table. And then last of all, our, it's our expansion strategy. So we are looking to use the pilot plant we have in, in, uh, in Quebec to define the 
the turnkey plant that will become the, uh, the source of our expansion. That turnkey plant will be uh, uh, designed for 12,000, 15,000 tons a, a year, kind of in that range. Um, it'll have the, uh, we'll, we'll put a wrapper around that with the intellect, the, the, intellect, the patents, the intellectual property, the know-how, um, the engineering plans, the flow sheets, and then on top of that, key pieces of equipment. That then becomes something that we can modularize around the world, um, not only here in Canada, Central Canada, uh, Quebec, yeah, but also in, in, um, in, in, in the US, um, in the Indo-Pacific region, in Europe. Um, that's really how we expand this technology and get into many, many different hands. So those are the, really the three key elements is that we're well positioned to address a, an existing market. We have a very uh, compelling value proposition that addresses security, cost and environment. And then uh, lastly, we have an expansion strategy that lets us kind of really go after the, the whole world to change how they make battery materials. You're hard to get an interview with. Everybody wants to talk to you. So. I'm going to take this opportunity to ask you, what is your vision for 2024? What are some of the key highlights that you're striving for? So for those of us kind of who, who know the story, maybe don't, um, we have a pilot plant in Quebec and we're using that to sample out materials for validation with, with uh, potential off takers looking to, to uh, have visibility and sight lines on off take and by, you know, in 2024 and, and, and into 2025 as well. We're going to be growing our customer base. So those are the, that's the first two key things. Last year, we completed the pre-feasibility study on, uh, on, a, on our future expansion plans. And we're right now midway through a feasibility study, which will be complete by mid-year. That will give us better CAPEX and OPEX um, uh, sight lines on the plant and actually enables uh, uh, us to have kind of a, a, a bankable approach towards lenders on, you know, project lenders and project financiers. And then, and then uh, the, the other key component is, is, is teeing up all of the supply. Where is the lithium and the iron and the phosphorus going to come from? So we're putting all those procurement strategies in place, lining up our, uh, our, our sources of those materials for, uh, for the future expansion. So you can expect news, you know, towards all of that in the coming year. You can expect news, uh, uh, I, we believe, on, on additional support from both the federal and the uh, and the provincial level uh, in the initiatives we have. And uh, and and really uh, a sort of not only a pan-Canadian, but I think a very much a North American a strategic effort towards bringing LFP to market to address uh, the, the needs not only in industrial storage, but also in uh, in, in really the, the, the mass market electric vehicle space. Well, again, congratulations on your partnership with Sumatoma. And as always, it's a real pleasure. Thank you, Tracy. Pleasure is mine as well. Thank you.